Few landscapes across the world can match the untamed beauty of the American West. From the deserts of Arizona to the painted rocks in Utah to the high peaks of the Rockies in Colorado, this part of the country remains one of its most inspiring places. And that inspiration manifests in many ways, one of which being the rugged determination to succeed found in the people who live there. This refusal to quit has shown itself in the area's sports conference as well, the former majesty of the Western Athletic Conference. At one point a conference of champions, at others a bloated mess that collapsed under its own weight, the WAC is the perfect example of that mentality. Too stubborn to stay dead, and yet too headstrong to keep itself alive. But the story of this conference, especially of its 16-team mess in 1996, is one that bears repeating today, especially since 16 is now seen as the minimum for a power conference today, as the Big 12 and SEC now sit at 16 members each, with the Big 10 and ACC sitting at 18. These new conferences have the money to stay large, but the issues brought up by the large size of the former WAC may raise themselves in these new conferences at some point in the future. Or not. Time will tell. But this is the history of the Western Athletic Conference. The history of the WAC actually begins long before its creation, with an offshoot of the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference called the Mountain States Conference. The RMAC, founded in 1909 as the Colorado Faculty Athletic Conference and consisting of the University of Colorado, Colorado College, Colorado School of Mines, Colorado A&M, Denver, Utah, Utah State, BYU, Wyoming, and Montana State, was one of the only major Division I conferences in the Rocky Mountain region at the time, and even had a full-time commissioner, Dick Romney. Yeah, of that Romney family. But since the conference's only major pull to keeping schools together was in their relative location, it made sense that once travel was becoming easier to achieve through trains and cars, schools would want to group together by size and relative athletic ability. This happened in 1938, when BYU, Colorado, Colorado A&M, which is now Colorado State, Denver, Utah, Utah State, and Wyoming all decided to split from the RMAC and form their own conference, calling it the Mountain States Athletic Conference, otherwise known as the Skyline Conference. The primary reason for this split was for better academic and athletic relations with schools that were similar to each other. Commissioners from the so-called Big Seven worked to create a schedule to maximize cohesion. They competed as these seven schools until Colorado's departure in 1947 to join the Big Six Conference, which, with the Buffalo's addition, would take the name Big Seven and would later become the Big Eight. Four years after Colorado's departure, the conference added New Mexico from the Border Conference and former Pacific Coast member Montana. They would stay with these members until 1962. During this time period, football as a sport was developing at a breakneck pace and was quickly taking over as the dominant sport in United States culture, leading to conference moves starting to be made based on football viability more so than sheer geographical convenience. One can see this clearly with the list of football champions during the Skyline's time as a major conference. Of the conference's 24 years of existence, a total of just six schools won football championships. Of those six schools, these two were immediately a part of the conference that would become of the Skyline, and each of them, except for Colorado, would eventually join it at a different date. The universities of Brigham Young, Utah, New Mexico, and Wyoming teamed up with former Border Conference members Arizona and Arizona State to create the Western Athletic Conference in 1962, providing the killing blow to the Skyline Conference. The conference even took their first commissioner from the Skyline, but it was almost even bigger, with Washington State, Oregon, and Oregon State at those initial meetings, according to an unsighted source on Wikipedia, but those three schools would decide to stick in the Pac-8 once it became apparent that the Airplane Conference was going to remain grounded. But with the WAC officially created, a new Premier League focused on the Rocky Mountain region of the United States looked to take hold. It didn't take too long for them to solidify themselves as worthy of that spot. Utah reached the Liberty Bowl in 1964, where they defeated future Big 12 foe West Virginia. The following year, Arizona State won a national championship in baseball, and Utah reached the Final Four in basketball the year after that. Despite their successes, the WAC was still fielding a lot of disrespect from larger conferences due to their lack of size. They had the success to build a conference that would run the Rockies, but they didn't have the image or the span. To fix this, they looked to expand past six schools in the mid-1960s. 
One school had just reached the top of the basketball world and was a perfect addition. Texas Western, or what we now know today as UTEP. The Miners had just come off a national championship victory in that same 1966 NCAA tournament, capping a one-loss season by beating Kentucky. The Miners, who had integrated their basketball team earlier, became the first team in NCAA history to start five black players in a national championship game, and they proceeded to win 72-65. UTEP's media stock could not be any higher. UTEP, in El Paso, was situated in the mountain time zone like the rest of the conference's members and had inroads in the talent-rich state of Texas. They also had a built-in rivalry with the rival of New Mexico, so adding them to the conference made perfect sense. They became the conference's seventh member in 1967. The following season, the conference decided to make inroads in the state of Colorado as well, re-inviting Colorado State as their eighth member. The Rams had spent the last few seasons as an independent, struggling to a 23-37-1 record under Mike Lude. But their location in the state of Colorado was an important addition, as well as bringing in a rivalry with Wyoming. 1971 saw the first Fiesta Bowl, originally a tie-in with the WAC. Arizona State conveniently played in their home stadium, winning by a touchdown over Florida State. For nearly 10 years, the conference stayed with these eight members until Arizona and Arizona State were enthralled by the concept of becoming the ninth and 10th members of the highly esteemed Pacific Eight Conference in 1978. To counteract the loss of two of the largest universities in the conference and whack pillars in their own right, the conference scrambled to find new universities. With the Pac-10 encroaching eastward into the mountains and away from their coastal counterparts, the WAC found it fitting to encroach on the Pac-10's grounds, inviting San Diego State in 1977 to join the following year. Unfortunately, due to the shifting landscape and the uncertainty surrounding the WAC's survivability, the conference lost their tie-in to the profitable Fiesta Bowl and settled for the Holiday Bowl instead. Also in 1977, an invitation was sent out to one of the most unique programs in college sports the University of Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, literally on an island hours away from the nearest program. They would join in 1979, rounding out the conference with eight again. Also in 1979, an invitation was sent to the Air Force Academy to join in 1980. They would accept. 1984 would signal a pivotal year for the WAC. Despite having a handful of strong programs in its history, the conference was not considered a major Division I conference on par with those such as the Pac-10 or ACC. This was one of the reasons as to why the two Arizona schools chose to leave. They weren't getting respect in the WAC. So when the BYU football program, fresh off a 13-0 season where they only played one ranked opponent, Pittsburgh, who finished the season with three wins, and a victory against a 500 Michigan team in the Holiday Bowl, was listed as the college football national champions by a handful of outlets, it was a huge boost to WAC perceptions. BYU would go on to be the final non-major power conference school to earn official distinctions as a national champion. Uh, no, UCF doesn't count. Also in 1984, the conference started their first ever men's basketball championship tournament held in El Paso, Texas. Unsurprisingly, the home Miners won over New Mexico. 1990 would later see the conference merge with the High Country Athletic Conference to bring its women's teams under the WAC banner as well. 1991 saw the addition of the conference's second California team, Fresno State, who would join the following season and become the conference's 10th member. But with other conferences becoming larger and larger, and the concept of football championship games bringing in extra revenue proving to be tantalizing at the least for a conference like the WAC, conference heads knew they had to get larger than 10 if they wanted to find a niche in the college sports world. The SEC was going to 12 with invites to Arkansas and South Carolina in the early 90s. In 1996, the college sports world spun again as the Big 8 merged with the top half of the Southwest, causing some major conferences to panic over how they'd get to 12. But there was nothing stopping a conference from going bigger. The WAC decided if they needed to survive, they'd go massive. According to Dennis Dodd at CBS, the conference's now infamous six-team expansion in 1996 happened without any input from athletic directors. It was purely an ill-advised money move. The conference added UNLV and San Jose State west of the Rockies, bringing the conference up to 12, but went even further with the definition of Western, adding Tulsa from the former Missouri Valley Conference, 
and former Southwest Conference teams TCU, Rice, and SMU. Splitting the conference into two divisions that were as big as some conferences proved to be a difficult plan to pull off, so the conference instead utilized a more unique approach. Divisions that were essentially two pods at once that would shuffle every two seasons. The two divisions were titled Mountain and Pacific, but were less geographical in name than they were in nature. In 1996, the Mountain Division was made up of BYU, New Mexico, Rice, SMU, TCU, Tulsa, Utah, and UTEP. The laughably named Pacific Division featured Air Force, Colorado State, Fresno State, Hawaii, San Diego State, San Jose State, UNLV, and Wyoming. They only ever shuffled divisions once in 1998. The BCS's introduction to college sports that same year proved to be an issue as well. Six conferences were kept as tie-ins, the so-called Power Six. The WAC was not one of them. This created a bit of an uproar with conference management, as Dodd reported. So many issues piled up due to this alignment. One of the most prominent was the fact that the league didn't make enough money, and with too many mouths to feed as a conference and not very many bowls, it was hard to keep everyone happy. In fact, BYU had to pay for their own Cotton Bowl trip out of pocket. The other was that the rotating divisions plan created too many headaches and that a permanent divisional structure should have been considered. Tom Deanhart at Rivals.com recounted in his 2011 article that Utah and BYU became the poster children for the two-divisional setup, one that Air Force and UNLV despised so much that they threatened to leave. The conference would either be losing some or the others. At the spring meetings in 1998, things had come to a head. Presidents of five schools met in the Denver airport and decided that splitting the league would be the best course of action. BYU, Utah, Colorado State, Air Force, and Wyoming decided to split, taking New Mexico, UNLV, and San Diego State with them. This created the Mountain West. Gutted and left with half their conference, the WAC scrambled to stay afloat as a group of five league now that their heavy hitters were gone. They added Nevada first in 2000, and a year later they extended invites to both Louisiana Tech and former associate member Boise State while losing TCU to Conference USA. The vast geographic range the conference had covered was still a defining characteristic of the WAC. The WAC extended invitations to New Mexico State, Utah State, and Idaho in 2003 and 2004, respectively, with all teams joining in 2005. At the same time, the four central teams, Rice, SMU, UTEP, and Tulsa, all left for Conference USA, leaving the conference with nine members once again. They competed as this nine-team league for a handful of years. In 2010, the league invited three more schools to get back to 12 members. Denver, who would be a non-football member, football startup UTSA, and Texas State up from FCS. This came ahead of Boise State's announcement that they would be leaving the conference in 2011 to join the Mountain West, further creating distance between the two conferences. Non-football invitations to Seattle and UT Arlington were extended. All four teams joined in 2012, as Nevada, Fresno State, and Hawaii decided to leave for the Mountain West as well. With the departure of those three teams, the WAC's feasibility as a football conference was no longer apparent. It dropped football in 2013, leaving the rest of its football playing members to find new homes, and forced the WAC to reevaluate its existence as a conference in this new world. They decided to do this by building a non-football league that could potentially rebirth itself as an FCS league later in life. They began their reconstruction by adding Cal State Bakersfield, Utah Valley, Grand Canyon, Chicago State, and Texas Pan American as full members in 2012. UMKC would join the following season to bridge the gap between Chicago State and the rest of the conference. With this foundation set and the plan for how to move the conference forward as a mid-major non-football conference solidified, the conference allowed for the rest of the old WAC members, Denver, Louisiana Tech, San Jose State, UT Arlington, UTSA, Texas State, and Utah State to find new conferences at the Group of Five level in 2013. UT Arlington would later rejoin the conference in 2022, and New Mexico State remained a full non-football member, choosing independence for its football team. Once this was done, the conference added Incarnate Word to be its next member. 2015 saw the universities of UT Brownsville and Texas Pan American merge to form the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, or UTRGV, which remained in the WAC. In 2018, the conference invited Division II California Baptist to begin their transition to Division I and join the conference. The following year, the conference invited Dixie State, now known as Utah Tech, 
to join the same process once CSU Bakersfield announced it would leave. Tarleton State and Texas did the same with exiting member UMKC later in the same year. With the additions of these schools, the WAC officially began their push for an FCS football league. To do so, they announced the additions of five new members in 2020, Abilene Christian, Lamar, Sam Houston State, and Stephen F. Austin from the Southland and Southern Utah from the Big Sky. UTRGV would begin a football program as well to join this new football branch of the conference in 2025. To round out the conference with more teams, the WAC partnered with three Atlantic Sun schools, Central Arkansas, Eastern Kentucky, and Jacksonville State. But with Conference USA's realignment in 2023 pulling in Jacksonville State and Sam Houston State and the affiliate Aggies also choosing CUSA for their full membership, the WAC only got two seasons of football done in 2021 and 2022. This was further complicated by dropouts from Lamar and Incarnate Word, who backed out of the WAC. To survive these changes, the football playing branch of the WAC announced a full merger with the A-Suns football playing branch, adding those two aforementioned schools as well as Austin P and North Alabama to the WAC's roster of Abilene Christian, Southern Utah, Stephen F. Austin, Tarleton, and Utah Tech, as well as UTRGV later down the line. It would be called the United Athletic Conference. It's not too difficult to see that the conference wants to follow in the footsteps of other reimagined conferences, like the Sun Belt or the Conference USA, which was originally a merger of two non-football leagues. It wants to eventually raise itself back to FBS, according to Colin Dever at KTSM News in El Paso. There is thought that it might be able to instantly compete with CUSA and potentially pull far-flung teams like New Mexico State and UTEP back into the conference, though this will be hard to predict. The future looks dark and daunting for the WAC, but given its insistence on continuing to sponsor sports in any condition and its refusal to die, it seems apparent that in some way, shape, or form, the WAC will be sticking around. Historically, though, the WAC was one of the college world's most intense conferences. They list their national championships on their official website, so this is where I'll be documenting them from. In baseball, the conference claims seven. Arizona State in 1965, 67, 69, and 77, Arizona in 1976, Rice in 2003, and Fresno State in 2008. Fresno also claimed a softball national championship in 1998. Seven cross-country championships belong to UTEP in the men's, with the BYU women claiming one as well. It's more of the same in track, with the minors running both indoor and outdoor track for the conference. BYU's odd 1984 championship is the conference's lone football championship. The WAC, like the Big East, is one of the conferences whose echoes reverberate the loudest in the modern college sphere. Five of the former schools are in the Big 12. Some are in the Mountain West. Some are in Conference USA. Some are in the American. And while it, like the Big East, kept itself alive through additions as long as it could, the consolidation of power leagues picked it apart piece by piece as well, until it could no longer function in the same space as the leagues that brought them there. But that doesn't mean it had to stay as a non-football league, and through pushing and shoving and gritted teeth, it looks to return to that space it had someday. Memories of Lavelle Edwards, Colt Brennan, and a Statue of Liberty echo loudly through the western United States, even as those days are long gone and the actors involved have all gone their separate ways. But the whack remains, undaunted, ready to climb that mountain again, no matter how many times it's been kicked down.